Hello and welcome to this Aim High Live. Uh, this one is going to be about high school physics. So this one's going to be focused on like school syllabus stuff. Um, thanks for coming, everyone who's come along. There's already loads of people in the chat. I'm just going to say hi to people. Hi Oliver, Roz is here. Omnipfnipfna is, is here, Vendable Sugar's here. Hi everyone, um, thanks for coming. Uh, and yes, I will, let's, let's go straight on to the greetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Um, okay, so this one is about high school physics and it's going to be about um, electricity, circuits and power. I know I only said it was going to be about circuits, but I'm going to do about power as well. So um, before we get going, uh, this uh, is, is an owl. Um, there's an owl that's living outside my house at the moment and every now and then it like flies past. Uh, and I saw it the other day carrying, um, carrying like a dead mouse or something. Um, in fact, there was a duck uh, who was nesting like next to the next to the front door as well, um, and and it spent weeks and weeks like raising up all its little ducklings. And then it marched them over to the pond, and then over the course of like a few days, uh, the owl ate all of them, which was pretty sad. But also, it was kind of kind of nice in some ways that the owl got to feed its babies, and I guess that's that's just life. But the duck has, has started again. Anyway, so this owl um, has something unusual going on with its feathers. Does anyone know what's special about an owl's feathers? Uh, what is special about an owl's feathers? Also, um, what's special about the feathers? I'll just draw a feather here. Um, has anyone ever played one of those games where you have to like make up, sorry, I know this is not at all electricity, but again, I'll start electricity in just a second. Um, you know, what's special about the feathers? Has anyone ever played one of those games where you have to make up um, like the definition of a word and they give you the word and then you just have to make up a definition? Because I find, one of the best things that you can do use in that game is uh, is just say that it's that the word means the name for like a little hook that holds it holds adjacent feathers next to one another because I don't know what that's actually called but I always use that as like my fake definition when I'm playing that game. Um, okay, so Posey Joe is saying they are waterproof, um, and Max is saying they support. A 360 degree head. So yeah, owls can spin their heads almost. Is it 360 degrees? I thought it was like 180 and they could see like directly behind them. Um, but I guess that's 360 all the way around, isn't it? That's maths. Um, but yeah, no, it's not that they're waterproof. It's actually kind of the opposite. It's super streamlined. Yeah, they're really insulating. Oh, it's 270 overall. That makes more sense. Uh, and Jeff, you haven't missed anything yet. I'm just talking about owls. Uh, and uh, none of the, okay, the thing that's special. This owl isn't evil. This owl is very kind. <laughs> Look at its smile. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, Catherine's just arrived as well. Catherine was just talking about owls, um, which is about to start on electricity in about one minute. Um, but uh, yeah, the special thing about owls, owl feathers is that they don't have any oil. There is no oil in owl feathers, um, which is bad for one reason and that it means that they are not very waterproof at all so owls really struggle with the rain they hate the rain but what's the advantage of having no oil in their feathers why would they want to have no oil in their feathers pangolin is saying it makes them soundproof exactly so if they're all oily then the wind will kind of whistle over them like a kind of sound and as they're moving quickly through the wind they'll be able to it'll be audible to animals that they're about to try and kill whereas because they have because they're so fluffy they absorb all of the sound that they're creating as they move and don't use shampoo um, and that means that they um, that they can easily uh, sneak up on their prey um, give me oil in my feathers I pray uh, okay right so um, I'm gonna give you guys uh, ooh. Here we go, this is the head of a goose. Right, so next to this head of a goose, I'm gonna give you um, an equation, um, and this is a new equation that I haven't given you yet um, in uh, electricity, which is the equation for power. Now, in fact, before we do it, what is power? So power is, is an important concept in, in physics. Um, what does it mean? And if you don't know, then say no, because I also I'll say, I, I say I don't know, because I kinda wanna get an idea of, of who knows what power is and who doesn't. Okay, so people are starting to put in what they think power means. I'm just going to grab this, actually. Let's grab that and pop it there. Um, 
So yeah, what is, what is power in physics? Um, and let me know if you don't know. Um, so some people are saying the amount of energy, energy that something's able to exert, not quite sure. Pangolin's saying energy over time. Um, and Catherine's saying people go crazy for power. And that is also true. Well, power normally makes people go crazy when they get too powerful. Um, anyway, so the idea of power in physics. So I always think about it like this, right? If you, if, if any of you guys set out to um, dedicate your life, let's say, to building, um, building a, let's say you want to just do something nice. Let's say you want to, let's say you want to build a new bridge and it's going to be a really nice bridge that's going to help connect people together. Um, and so there's an island over here and you've got a load of people on the island and they have to take the boat across all the time and and here's, here's the rest of the mainland. And you think it would be nice if there was if there was a bridge because then there'd be less boat traffic going across and it'd be less, less disruptive for the water, so it'd be better for nature and it'd also be better for the people because it'd be easier for them to get across. And you want to build this bridge. Um, now, I reckon if any of you set your minds to it, then you could dedicate your life to getting this bridge built and you could make sure it got built. However... If someone like um, a prime minister or a president or someone decided they wanted that bridge built, then I'm sure they could do it as well, right? They could also get the bridge built. But what would be the difference? Like, what would be the difference between someone like a, someone powerful um, saying they wanted the bridge built or, or one of us just being like, oh, we, we just want to get this bridge built? Um, what's the difference? So yeah, Pangolin's right, right on it. So it's exactly, it's about time. And the way it seems is saying time as well. Get out of the freezer is saying easy, but it's, it's all about time. It's about the time that it takes. So obviously it takes a lot of effort to build a bridge, but how quickly can you make that effort happen? It's all about time. Powerful people are able to do things quickly. Um, it's, and I wouldn't, it's not necessarily true that powerful people are able to do things that other people can't because I think that if you if you dream big enough and you apply yourself you can you can genuinely achieve like almost anything um, but it's all about how quickly you can do it so the more powerful you become the more quickly you can build a bridge so um, power in physics is the same thing it's about how much energy you can um, you can uh, use or transfer or whatever um, per unit time so how quickly you can transfer energy so some people have already said the equation which is Power equals, and KC has just put it in as work over time, which is great. I'm going to, for now, just label it as a capital E. So power is the amount of energy per unit time. Now, if you were here in an earlier lesson, you will have remembered that I told you all that per means divide. Per means divide. So power is the energy per unit of time. It's the amount of energy you can transfer per unit of time. So um, quick question. If you are transfer, if this goose um, is... Uh, Trans if this if what would the goose be doing? Um, let's say the uh, goose decides to uh, give. <laughs> I cannot think what this goose would be doing. Okay, this goose is cooking. It's cooking. It's heating up some food. Um, it's decided to give the food uh, fifty joules of energy. Fifty joules of energy, and it's going to do it in in fifteen seconds. No, no, let's, let's not call it 50 seconds. Let's call it 20 seconds. So it's going to take 20 seconds. What is the power that the goose is transferring to the food? If it's transferring 50 joules of energy to the food in 20 seconds. Jeff's saying that isn't much energy. And you're right. But the goose is just eating a very small amount of food. It's a giant goose. <laughs> um, and, and I don't understand how this works. Um, but... So Pangolin is saying current times voltage, and exactly, we're going to come to that as well. Um, okay, so lots of people are saying 2.5 watts. The, the goose is cooking a deja vu egg um, or joules per second. Nice. Okay, so quite a few people are saying 2.5, um, which is great. So if this, if this is something you want to write down, if you're, if you're, I mean, if you're just curious about this, then obviously you don't have to, but if you're learning physics at school and you don't have this equation yet, this is the, one of the really important ones. So power is measured in, and a lot of people have already said this, it's measured in watts, which is given a capital W. And time, as you know, is measured in seconds. And energy is measured in joules. So if that, if you want to write that down in like a, in a, on a note somewhere, that's one of the key equations in all of physics. Right, okay, so um, another question. 
if you were transferring, uh, let's say, 75 joules of energy. Sorry, no, let's, no, different. Let's say you've got, you've got um, a goose that is cooking on a 75 watt oven. So this oven has 75 watts in power and the goose continues to cook on the oven for two minutes. How much energy does the goose transfer? So if the goose is cooking on a 75 watt oven for two minutes, then how much energy does it transfer? What do you guys think? So get out of the freezer is saying 150 joules, which means get out, of, so get out of the freezer, you've fallen into the trap that I set on purpose because I just wanted to demonstrate how important units are in physics. So the time is in seconds. So I've given it to you in minutes, which means you have to convert it to seconds. Um, and a few people have, and so they've gone for 9,000 joules, which is right because, and Max is saying it's gonna be 120 times 75. So if power is energy divided by time, then if you times both sides by time, then that will give you power times time on the left equals energy on the right. Remember, when you're rearranging an equation, you just do the same things on both sides. So if we times both sides by time, then this just becomes energy and this becomes power times time. So power times time, 75 times 120 seconds. Um, okay, let me give you one more of those before I move on to the next bit, which is this. Let's say uh, the goose is now cooking on a 100 watt oven. Um, it's, and it is doing so, uh, and it, and it wants to transfer, let's say 3000 joules. How long does it need to cook for? If it's going to cook for a hundred on a hundred watt oven and it wants to transfer 3000 joules, how long does it have to cook for? Okay, the way it seems is is not enjoying the maths. We're about to move away from the maths and about to head more towards the story of, of uh, well, Tesla and Edison, which I think is a really good story. Um, but for those who got it, yeah, it's 30 seconds. So 100 watts, 3,000 joules. If you put these into the equation, so let's just move this aside a little way. Um, if you put these into here, we know that the power is 100 and we know that the energy is 3,000. And so, and so therefore the time must be 30 seconds for that to work. So yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, cool. Um, and people are asking what the definition of a, of a joule is. So a joule is like one of the fundamental units but you can also use it as like a as as the distance that something has moved but anyway we'll do that another time because i don't want to get too too stuck in that i want to move away from the goose and up here and just talk to you about power in electricity um, so when you're calculating power in electricity you use this equation physics has got so many equations you use p equals i v so you um who remembers what I stands for and who remembers what V stands for and what they're measured in. So we're just doing that. That's the power measured in watts. So current and voltage. Voltage, I is current in amps. Nice, amazing, great work everyone. So yeah, I is current. And that's in amps, um, and V is the voltage. And also I see that there's a lot of chat going on about the de definition of joules, and do go for it. Sorry, I'm, I'm not focusing on that because I want to get through to the, get, I want to get away from the equation stuff and talk about Edison and, and uh, Tesla. Um, but I'll come back to that another time. But uh, I'm glad that you're all chatting about it. Anyway, so yeah, power is uh, the current times the voltage. So um, really quickly, and especially for, for the way it seems, because I know it's, it's, you said that you weren't, uh, lacking the other bit of maths. Um, let's see if you, you can do this one as well. So what about if you have a current of five amps flowing through a circuit and it's being pushed along by a battery with, that is 12 volts, what will the power be? Posey is saying, I have like three pages of equations from my physics lessons, but I swear they keep on coming. Yeah, so that's one of the things I kind of want to do when, when, when we've got a bit more time to do more of these and I'm able to do like more of the course, I'll show you how you can actually not learn loads of them. Um, Okay, so lots of people are saying 60 watts because it's 5 times 12. 
current is 5, voltage is 12, 5 times 12 is 60 watts. 5 times 12, so the way it seems knows it's 12 times 5, it's just written 9 million. Um, <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, so, uh, I, okay, I'll just really quickly show you, I, I kind of want to talk about these guys because this is such a good story, um, but, okay, just really quickly, I'll show you about how to, how to know a load of equations without actually remembering them. So, for example, like, miles per hour is a unit that everybody knows, and that is already the equation for speed, distance, and time, because we all know that's the speed, right? And it's miles, which is distance, so it's a distance in miles per divided by hours is a time. So speed is distance over time. And there are loads and loads of units that store all of the information about the unit, about, about the equation in the units. And you'll find that actually there are loads of things that are already in your head and you already know these equations. Um, so uh, what's, a, what's another one? Like, I don't know who's done momentum yet, but momentum is all measured in kilogram meters per second. Momentum is measured in kilogram meters per second. And that's why momentum P equals kilograms mass times meters per second speed or mass times velocity. Anyway, we're not going to do that for now. I want to talk about um, Tesla and Edison. Right, okay, so Tesla and Edison um, are two people who you might have heard of. They're two really important people in the history of electricity. Um, I would say this is, I mean, obviously you can't be completely black and white with this, and as always, you know, you could come down on the side of either of them, but I reckon one of these was pretty easily the good guy, and the other one was pretty easily the bad guy. Who do you think was which? Um, votes for, um, so write down who you think the good guy was in the battle that went on between Edison and Tesla. Who do you think, who do you think was, was, was in the, on the right side of history? Okay, Catherine and Oliver are saying Tesla bad, um, <laughs> but quite a few people are saying Tesla good. Uh, Omnipus saying Tesla bad, Edison good. Edison looks really friendly, doesn't he? And Tesla looks really looks like he's not so friendly in this picture. In fact, I would pretty solidly say that Tesla was was the good the good guy here. Like this was a, this was an amazing battle that happened in history between between these two, and these two were just like okay. So let me set the scene. Tesla is this like slightly um, slightly weird like uh, guy who who has these like really intense visions. He has such intense visions growing up that he will literally like have to stop and just like cope with the vision that he's experiencing. And it will often be something amazingly creative that will help to give him ideas, but it makes him like really socially awkward. He's, he's, he finds it very difficult at school, he finds it difficult to fit in and so on. But ultimately, he's a total genius. And he invents some of the most incredible things that are ever invented in the history of science. Uh, he's, a, he's an amazing, amazing person. Um, and he moves to America um, to, to work on electricity because he sees it as a big place to... <laughs> Tesla looks evil though. Yes, I do agree. Um, he does look evil in this picture. Um, but Tesla, I think, is, was, was a really good guy. Um, but anyway, he moved to America to work on electricity and, and he invented all kinds of incredible things. And he always cared about the science. He just wanted to advance the science and make the science better. Meanwhile, Edison who is famous for inventing the light bulb, although he didn't actually invent the light bulb, it was invented by someone else. He was just the person who made a lot of money out of the light bulbs. Um, Edison, his whole thing was about how do we make money out of electricity? How do we control it? Like some of the big inventions of Edison were electricity meters so that they could work out how much electricity people had used and then charge them for it and so on. That was what Edison was all about. He was all about money, he was all about business. Tesla was all about science, he was all about making stuff um, work. Now, they, now, that, <laughs> uh, okay. You seem to do a lot of speech, I literally did a speech on why Tesla was better than Edison. Oh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff's doing so many speeches. Um, anyway, so, there are two kinds of, uh, ways that electricity can flow, um, and these ways are called DC and AC. Does anybody know what DC and AC mean? What do you guys reckon? What does DC mean and what does AC mean? And Oliver's saying he's clever, not evil. <laughs> um, wait, who's clever, not evil? I've lost track of who you're talking about. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so Vendable Sugar is saying alternating current. Max is saying direct current. Um, okay, yeah, exactly. It's, the, it's direct current and alternating current. Now, for those who don't know, that means um, that means if you've got a wire and you've got the electricity traveling down the wire, then direct current, oh, direct current will be when the electrons just flow down the wire, all in one direction. Um, alternating current will be when the electrons flow in one direction and then they flow back the other way and then they flow back the other way and then back the other way and they keep going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards really, really quickly. So like in a, in a single second, they might go backwards and forwards 50 times or, or 100 times or it depends on the electricity setup that you've got. Um, now, all of the electricity in our homes oh, coming out of the wire, the sockets and stuff it's all, do you guys know which? Which, which is the electricity that's, uh, that's coming through the sockets in our homes? Is it DC or AC? Okay, so a few people saying DC. Posey Joe's saying I'm learning this right now. Um, and Jeff is saying AC, the way it seems AC and Pangolin AC. Exactly, yeah, it's AC. So AC is what we all have in our homes, which means that the electricity coming out of the sockets is actually going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, which means that when you plug in an appliance into the into like a socket, so let's say you, you plug in a light bulb um, into a wire, then when the electricity starts, well, obviously, sorry, it'll be, it'll go, in one part of the socket and then back to the other part of the socket. Um, but what I always find amazing is that I always thought the electricity would be electrons that would travel all the way along the wire through the bulb and then back down the other wire. But instead, the electrons just, this is why it's so important, that traffic jam thing that I keep talking about, is that the electrons here just move a little bit to the left and that moves all the electrons to the left, which means all the electrons in the wire move to the left, which means all the electrons here move that way. And all the electrons have to move a little bit and then they turn around and they go the other way and so all the electrons move that way and then they move that way and then they move that way over and over again. And so it's actually the same electrons going backwards and forwards through the light over and over and over again and they're being pushed backwards and forwards by the other electrons in the circuit. Um, so yeah, this is AC. AC is electricity going backwards and forwards. Now, um, these guys had a massive battle about this because Tesla was like, well, obviously AC is better because AC allows you to do, a, do this trick that is impossible with DC. So AC allows you to flip the electricity from high voltage electricity to low voltage. So in the electricity pylons that are outside carrying all the electricity around the country, do you think that's high voltage or low voltage? And then when it comes inside the homes, do you think that's high voltage or low voltage? What do you guys reckon? So where do we have high voltage and where do we have low voltage? Okay, exactly. We have high voltage. Yeah, the wiggle is always better. Yes, get out of the freezer. Um, so here we have high voltage in the, in the pylons and then we have low voltage in the homes. And this is great because low voltage in the homes is, in fact, what do you guys think? Why, why would we want low voltage in the homes? And why would we want high voltage in the, in the pylons? It's e the easy answer is why we want low voltage in the homes. High voltage in the pylons is actually quite a difficult answer. So Jeff's saying in case it malfunctions. It's not, well, it is kind of, a, yeah, it is in case it malfunctions, but why? why? Um, low voltage goes through small wires, yeah, so sometimes saying fires so they don't explode. It's not necessarily about explosions as such, it's more just about, well, I mean, I guess, I guess it could be, it could lead to kind of dangerous episodes, but it's more, it's more just that um, high voltage is dangerous. You touch a high voltage wire, you're much more likely to die than touching, touching a low voltage wire. So low voltage in the homes is really, is important for safety if things go wrong. Um, it's, yeah, there's less energy being carried per unit charge. So low voltage in the home is a much better, is a much better system. However, why do we want high voltage in the wires? This is a really, this is a really weird one. Okay, Adam on Jupiter is saying better transporting efficiency and that's spot on. Yeah, it is to do with how, how well you can transport it. So you can put, transport the electricity more efficiently at high voltage. Okay, so in order to explain that, I'm just gonna go back to here back to our equation that we were looking at before about power and, and volt, power and current and voltage. Now, if you have exactly the same amount of power, so we're keeping the same amount of power, but we're gonna have a higher voltage 
then what does that mean will happen to the current? So let's, I'll give you some numbers. Let's say that the, the power is 12, and to begin with, the current is three and the voltage is four. What happens if we increase the voltage up to six? What does the current become if the power is gonna stay at 12? So if the voltage goes from four up to six, then what does the current have to become if the power is gonna stay at 12? So Max is saying two, exactly. So if the power is gonna stay the same, then three times four works, current times voltage. But if you put the voltage up to six, then the current has to go down. So this is the key idea that Tesla realized is that because the amount of energy that's transferred down the wires is gonna stay the same, if you have a high voltage, that means you've got a low current. So if we put the voltage all the way up to 12 volts, then the current would go down to one amp. And you could go even further. If you put it up to 120 volts, you'd have 0.1 amps of current and so on. So basically the higher the voltage, the lower the current, if the power is staying the same. And Tesla realized this and he was like, great, okay. Ooh, oh, I didn't realize I had all that space over there. Um, okay, let's go back to here. So yeah, Tesla realized this and he was like, great, if we have high voltage in the pylons, that means we'll have a low current. And if we have a low current, that means that these electrons that are going down the wire are gonna be traveling really slowly. And if they travel really slowly down the wire, what is the benefit of that? Why is it better to have the electrons in the pylons floating overhead? Why is it better to have the electrons traveling slowly? So Max has asked, why is that better? Yeah, so this is what we're doing now. Um, Oliver's saying, can current be higher than voltage? And you're exactly right. Yep, you could make the... Um, you could make the current higher and the voltage lower, and that's what we do in the homes. So in the homes, we have a high current and a low voltage. Um, and Pangolin is saying, can it travel further with the electrons going um, slower? And it's not necessarily about it traveling further, it's about energy being wasted, exactly. So as the electrons travel down the wire, if they're traveling super fast, then they'll constantly be bumping into the metal metal um, atoms. So while they're trying to like whiz down the wire and like dodge in between the metal atoms, they'll constantly be like bashing into them. And as they bash into them, everything will vibrate and the wire will get really hot. So in a high current, you've got all this movement and you've got all the electrons flowing, loads of bashing around, loads of heat being created and the wire gets really hot. Whereas in a, lo in a, whereas in a low current situation, so if you've got a high voltage, then the electrons are all going really slowly and so you don't get much bashing around, not much vibrating, and so the wires stay nice and cold. So a, a, high, a, a wire with a high current is a very hot wire. It'll be giving off lots of heat. I was wondering this the other day, actually. I wonder why it is that birds sit on these wires because there must be some heat being given off them and maybe they quite like getting their feet warm. Um, but anyway, yes, so um, Tesla wanted, to, to recap, Tesla wanted to have AC because he realized that AC was the only one that could be used to switch between high voltage and low voltage. And he realized this was a good thing because you want low voltage in the homes because it's safer and high voltage in the wires because if you have a high voltage, that means that you'll have a low current. Oh, sorry, shift that back on. Ah. Yeah, if you have a high voltage, that means you'll have a low current. And he was like, okay, this is great because we want a low current because that is then gonna heat up our wires a lot less. And if we're heating up our wires a lot less, then it's gonna be transporting electricity much more efficiently around the system. Anyway, he lost this battle for many years because even though he was a scientist who wanted to do the best for, for people and he wanted to do things in a sensible way, Edison was so hell-bent on making money and he was the one who had all the patents on DC electricity. So he spread loads of misinformation about how dangerous AC was he kept telling, he, he, like, there were all these stories made up about AC being like a terrible invention that was going to kill people because it had high voltage. In the, and obviously it had high voltage in the, in the traveling wires, but that was because it made it more efficient. But Edison made people really scared of it. And so for many, many years, people were terrified of AC. People tried not to use it. And you literally had Edison and Tesla running different... Uh, different systems into cities where some people run on AC and others run on DC and Tesla tried to make loads of money out of it and held electricity back for many years because he was so obsessed with with trying to make his um, make money out of, out of something and Tesla was just trying to do the right thing um, 
And uh, Casey is asking about Elon Musk, uh, who is the guy who runs, who founded SpaceX and, um, and also the car company Tesla. Did he name it after Tesla on purpose? And I think he did, yeah, because Tesla is one of the greatest scientists in history. Like he, he really came up with some of the most incredible things that you'll learn if you take physics later um, that, com- that, like, uh, di- that, that have allowed us to progress so far. Like we wouldn't have phones and computers and all these kinds of things if it weren't for Tesla. Um, and yeah, he's, he's a totally amazing guy who was really dedicated to science and, and had a really difficult life as well. Um, like had to struggle with a lot, a lot of things, but, but, um, yeah, he was amazing. But Edison was the guy who got all the, all the reward at the time. Um, and it's kind of a really sad story because Tesla was great. Anyway, so, um, right. I'm gonna, so we're coming to the end of this. In fact, we've kind of reached out, but I kind of want to give everyone a puzzle to see if, to see how, uh, how on top of electricity from last time everyone is. So I'm going to just give everyone this circuit. If you've got a six volt battery, and if you missed any of the last lessons, don't worry about this. But for those who were there, I just want to check to see how much you're staying on top of electricity. So if you've got a six volt battery and you've got two one ohm resistors, what is the voltage here at position one and here at position two? What is the voltage at those two positions? What's the voltage at one and what's the voltage at two? And the next question is, what is the current going to be if you were to put an ammeter here at position three? So people are saying three volts and that's right. So yep, six volts is like spending money. The electricity travels around. It's got six volts to spend. It's going to spend three volts here and three volts here because they're both equally hard to get through. And then it can come back and with its zero volts and collect six more and off it goes again. Um, Okay, brilliant. What about three? What will the reading be on this ammeter? Now, for those who have forgotten, remember that when you have two resistors, one after the other, the resist the total resistance is those two added together. So the total resistance here is two ohms. Uh, and also for those who've forgotten, the equation that links voltage, current, and resistance is this. Voltage is current times resistance. So if we know that the voltage is six volts, and we know, and we're trying to find the current, and we know that the total resistance is two, then the current must also be three amps, which loads, <laughs> spend those Vs, <laughs> spend those voltage. Um, yeah, then the current must also be two amps. Right, great, okay. Um, now, if we, um, let's flip this around and add another, so let's add another leg of this circuit. So if we put another one ohm resistor here, then um, complete people please tell me what is the voltage gonna be at position four. And let's redo the ammeters. So let's have a current reading here, which is answer number five, a current reading here, which is number six. And then let's have this again as seven. What do you think these numbers are gonna be? So remember, six volts, um, for those who've forgotten, uh, it's like spending money. So you're going to go around this way and here we'll spend three volts and spend three volts and then you can come back to the beginning. Whereas if you've got six volts to spend and the current goes this way, then how much can you afford to spend here before you go back to the beginning? So people are coming in with six volts, exactly. You can spend all of the voltage here. Oh, I've put a six there instead of an A. That's supposed to be an A for ammeter. So exactly, four is going to be six volts. Um, one and two are still going to be three volts each. Now, the next question is, um, at position four and position five, what will the current be? So at position four here, sorry, I've mixed up my numbers a little bit. Let's, let's call this the new position four. Um, at the position four for current, um, oh, I know, sorry, that was supposed to be position six. Ah, let's put it back to position six. Um, yeah, that could be position six. Um, okay, so at position six here, we've got a voltage of six volts and we've got a resistance of one. So if the voltage is six and the resistance is one, what must the current be here? So quite a few people are saying the current here must be, must be six amps. And here at position five, we've got a resistance of two. So resistance is two, 
and the voltage is six. And so here we're gonna have a current of three amps. So what will, there is, what will the current be at position seven? So what will the current be at position seven if we've got six amps here and three amps here? What will it be at position seven? So Venable Sugar and Jeff both saying nine. And for those who've forgotten, if we've got three amps in this wire and six amps in this wire, then when they come together, then we will make nine amps again. Cool, great, okay, good. Um, this is really good. It feels like everyone's getting better at this. Um, let me know uh, how you, well, I'll just show you what's coming up next. I'll stick this on the screen. So yeah, this is what is coming up next week uh, after the weekend, uh, at least up until halfway through Wednesday. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments uh, how you feel you how you um, feel this is. If you want it to go a bit faster, if you want it to go a bit slower, if you felt like you followed everything, or if you feel like there are some things you'd like to recap, and if you want to recap things, throw them into the chat so they know for next time. Um, and uh, thanks so much for coming. And I will see you guys next week. Well, on Monday I'm doing can recycling save us, so do come along to to that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, do, do follow our social media and share it with your friends. Um, and also, if you want to get the schedule sent to you by email, um, then sign up to our mailing list, which is just below the live on our website. And also, um, I need to update the feedback form. But if you haven't filled in the feedback form, do fill it in because it's so useful to, to know what is working and what isn't so that we can steer this into a good place for you guys um anyway thanks all uh have a good weekend and um thanks for coming and if you see any uh if you see a goose uh that has been cooking uh at 100 on 100 watt oven then uh point them back in my direction because i've i've lost track of them all right bye